Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, January 23rd, 2022. We are in, uh, still in Unit 2 for the quarter, and our lesson is Lesson Number 8. Unit 2 is entitled, God, the Source of Justice. God, the Source of Justice. This is Deacon Barry Taylor. Um, we are um, going to be looking at a devotional reading taken from Psalm 46, verses 10 and 11. Background scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 18 to 20. Chapter 17, verse 8 to 13. Chapter 19, verses 15 to 21. And our printed passage Deuteronomy chapter 16 verses 18 to 20 and chapter 17 verses 8 to 13. From the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly, our lesson title is Incorruptible Leaders. Incorruptible Leaders and our lesson aims, well, first of all, our key verse is verse chapter 16 verse 18. From the King James Version, it reads, Judges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes and they shall judge the people with just judgment our lesson aims or number one discover why God established the roles of judges officials and priests and what those roles entailed number two value persons who make decisions based on God's justice and then number three practice justice in your roles as leaders after the introduction our lesson has two divisions the first is entitled secure just leaders and that's covered between Deuteronomy 16 verses 18 to 20 and the second is honor just decisions and that's covered between Deuteronomy 17 verses 8 so let's go before the throne father we do thank and praise you for yet another opportunity to study your precious word Lord we thank you for such understanding as you've given us uh, so far of your word Lord and we pray Lord that you would help us as we study this lesson Lord to understand how important justice is righteousness is in your sight Lord and how important it is for your children to imitate you uh, who are just altogether just and righteous in all of our dealings Lord Lord we thank you for that the righteousness of Christ has been imputed to us Lord by our faith in him and his sacrificial death on the cross for us Lord and Lord we ask that you would uh, give guidance to all those who or judges uh, over us Lord in every at every level Lord we pray that you give them godly wisdom and Lord they would stand in your place Lord in executing just justice as you have uh, declared in your word in this lesson Lord, we ask your blessings upon all the hearers the families represented we ask your blessings your specific blessings Lord to meet their every need Lord we thank you yet again for this opportunity Lord as we study as we learn more about what you require of us, Lord, in executing justice and seeking uh, the, the, your righteousness, Lord, uh, that we put into practice, Lord, what we learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just a few words of, uh, in the way of background on the lesson. Our lesson is taken from Deuteronomy, which uh, most of you know, I'm sure, is the fifth book of the Bible, or the Pentateuch, uh, and it means second law, or actually it's a second giving of the law. Uh, as uh, you Bible students know, uh, God gave the law to the generation that was brought out of bondage in Egypt in Exodus and Leviticus. Uh, that uh, generation uh, uh, lacked faith lacked the faith to go into the the land of canaan which the lord was giving them uh we read we read about that in numbers and because of that lack of faith god 
turned them back into the desert, back into the wilderness where he said they would wander for 40 years or another 38 plus years at this point and their carcasses, all those who were older than 20, uh, their carcasses would fall in the, in the desert. And so this generation is 2021 20, and older and younger rather uh, at that point that were at that point uh, are now poised to go into the land of Canaan to possess it. Uh, they and as Moses declared back in Numbers when he told and gave God's judgment on that older generation he would take their children into the land the ones that they feared for uh, or, or that's what they used as a as a reason for not wanting to go into the land and so he's take he is declaring to them what he had declared to their parents the law of the Lord we read about that in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1 read the first five verses in fact let me just read a couple of those verses so beginning at Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1 it says these are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel on this side of Jordan in the wilderness in the plain opposite shirt between Paran, Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth and Dishahab and he said, um, let me skip down here to verse 3, and it says, Now it came to pass in the fortieth year, in the eleventh month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke to the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him as commandments to them. Now, and that's this happens after, it goes on to say it happened after he had killed Saigon, the king of the Amorites, and so forth. So he is declaring unto them all that the law had, or the Lord rather, had declared to him. And he's going to do that with some specificity. As you, if you read Deuteronomy, you know that. So, what uh, is our lesson about? Let me try to give a, a brief overarching summary. This lesson is about the dispensation of justice justice is the same word uh, that can be translated from the Hebrew uh, and Greek as righteousness or simply doing what is right it means simply doing what is right the Lord declares throughout the Old and New Testament that he is righteous and that is one of the communicable attributes that he wants to see in his children uh, we see that in, Ex in Ezra, rather, 9, 15, 2 Chronicles uh, 12, 6, Psalms 1, 5, Nehemiah 9, 8, and so many other places where the Lord is declared righteous, and he wants us to be righteous. Now, we are talking, and, and in this sense, we're talking about our personal righteousness, our personal justness or doing what is right before the Lord. And of course, that is one of various qualities, communicable attributes, I should say, that the Lord wants us to have. He declares uh, he wants us to be merciful. He said, be merciful, for I am merciful, tenderhearted, and so forth. Uh, but this lesson, today's lesson, considers justice alongside some of those officials who were supposed to administer uh, it in the Old Testament in Old Testament Israel, namely judges and priests. So the Lord, through Moses, of course, gives instructions for the individuals, how they are to, to be just and righteous in all of their dealings. But our lesson deals with his instructions to the judges and the priests who were to administer justice when various cases came before them. Now, it's important for us to know that uh, there are four distinct types of justice that were to be administered. I'm going to try not to get into too much detail uh, here, but the first is distributive justice. And that was to ensure economic fairness. We we'll read about that in Deuteronomy 24, 14, and chapter 15, verse 2. Also Thessalonians 3, uh, 10, and James 5 and 4. 
The second was restorative justice to require restitution by an offender. We read about that in Exodus chapter 22, verses 1 to 15, Luke 12, verses 58 and 59, also Luke 18, 3 and 5, and Luke 19 and 8. The third was restributive justice to punish offenders because they deserved it. That yes, there is punishment. And we read about that in Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 2, Romans chapter 13, verses 4 and 5. Punishment was, was to be meted out when punishment was due, and often it was to serve as an example for others not to do the same thing. And then the fourth type was procedural justice for ensuring fairness in application of rules by due process. And we see that in Exodus chapter 23, verse 3. And uh, also James um, tw 2, rather, verses 1 to 9. Verses 1 to 9. And, 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 and this, the... Uh, this is a starting point for us to understand uh, the types of justice that were to be administered as various cases were to come before. Uh, first, the local judges and officials that were to be seated at the gate or were the public uh, official business and, and trials, if you will, were, took place. Uh, but then he also gives prescription for how harder cases were to be handled. And we'll talk more about those when we get in, as we get into the lesson. I want to back up and say this: this portion in this portion of Deuteronomy, uh, Moses spoke to various leadership positions and how they were to function. Um, judges, uh, how they were to function, is covered between Deuteronomy chapter 16 to uh, 18, verses 18 to 17 verse 13 kings Deuteronomy 17 14 to 20 priests Deuteronomy 18 verses 1 to 8 and prophets Deuteronomy 18 verses 14 to 22 so uh, the the prescriptions for how the uh, judges were to implement justice is, is in a larger context of where Moses or the Lord through Moses is giving instruction to for all those who were to govern uh, the people of Israel, God's people Israel. So our lesson picks up at verse uh, 18 and from the again from the uh, pathway of the adult quarterly the uh, first division is secure just leaders and from the standard, the first division is entitled General Goals. So first lesson, I'm going to read from mostly from the King James Version. Uh, Judges and officers shalt thou make in thy gate and all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Okay, so... When he says make, when he says judges and officials shall make, uh, the uh, typically the priests might make these or the kings might make these uh, or point the judges and officers. And uh, they were to, uh, in the case of local situations, local cities or towns uh, which didn't have a presiding king, of course these were to be the priests or whoever had the authority in that area over of governance over that uh, that area civil governance and of course um, uh, there was a religious leader as well and, and actually in those days there was very little distinction between the, the sacred and the secular uh, as we might uh, discuss a little more when we get further into the lesson uh, so uh, the judges were to 
be set up in the gates. And again, I said that was the city square, if you will. It was the public square. It was the place where uh, people were to come for judgments of various types or when they brought a cause or when they had a dispute with someone over anything. He says that... He said that the, 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 in the places which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now remember they have not yet gone into the land of Canaan. Uh, God has not driven out the people before them uh, or enabled them uh, with his, of course, aid to drive out the people, the, the current inhabitants of Canaan. But the Lord is going to give them this land and he's telling them what they're to do with it. That, now he said throughout thy tribes as you know the various tribes were portioned uh, certain uh, areas of land without throughout the land of canaan uh and uh and he said they shall judge the people with just judgment what is he saying there well that's a duplication uh, whenever god duplicates or reiterates I mean, when, when there's a redundancy there then he is stressing the importance of it as I said, uh, the word just uh, can also mean righteous. Uh, it's the idea of pursuing a right relationship with God as well as a right, right and fair relationships with other people, with humans. And uh, we read about that uh, in uh, Deuteronomy 24, verses 12 to 13, Leviticus 19 and 15. And 36 and, and there's several other places where we read about the type of right relationship God wants us to have with himself and certainly with other people with our neighbors and, and again what does righteousness mean it means simply doing what is right doing what is right before God you know not necessarily certainly men who understand God and his will uh, it's doing right before them but uh, as we know in our current culture, uh, we're in an age uh, <laughs> where uh, people are calling good evil and evil good uh, from Isaiah chapter 5 verse, verse 20. So what is right nowadays in the eyes of man does not comport necessarily with what God considers right and just. Now, uh, Just before we move on to verse 19, he says, Judges and officers make thee. Well, the officers were thought to be people that assisted the judges in uh, uh, providing leadership and uh, just decisions uh, that were being made for the people. Okay, now verse uh, 19a reads, Thou shalt not rest judgment. Okay, now I'm sure we pretty much all know what that means, and certainly if you're reading your NIV, you know that that word rest means pervert justice or twist it uh, it means to skew or twist pervert or distort in this case it's effect that it affects one's ability to make right and just judgment or decisions that are just in the in, in the various cases that came before them you know later in Deuteronomy in uh, chapter 27 verse 19 um, the uh, individuals who pervert justice were told to be cursed and uh, and this happened uh, unfortunately too often in cases concerning the needy individuals in the land especially the stranger and fatherless and uh, widows uh, we read about that in Deuteronomy 24 as well. Um, and I, I want to just stick a pen in this for a minute because much is said about the need for uh, social justice uh, today. And I think we need to be careful about that. I've seen that in uh, the last few lessons in the, in the quarterly. Um, obviously, we want God's justice to be done at every level of our governance. Uh, and that means, uh, I think, a fair and equal system of justice. 
a fair playing field, equality in uh, employment opportunities, educational opportunities, regardless of our race, creed, uh, ethnicity, and so forth, does not necessarily mean um, government handouts or reverse discrimination. Uh, I think we, we come really close to uh, what we have known to be for dec decades as socialism when we, uh, when we put uh, too much emphasis on what we are calling now social justice. In fact, if you Google social justice, uh, uh, you, will, you will invariably read uh, something defining it as redistribution of wealth. Uh, that's basically what it, it is defined as now, and I'm not thinking. I'm not suggesting that we want to uh, pr be pursuing that or uh, forcing people to uh, 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 accept people on the basis of their skin. I mean, now as we know we're celebrating. Mar we just celebrated Martin Luther King's birthday, and Martin Luther King uh, was an advocate for equality for rights, for civil rights, for the same rights that every other citizen in this nation has. He wasn't uh, an advocate of special treatment or reverse discrimination. So I think I, I could say a lot more about that. I, I don't want to get too far into that, but I think we need to be careful when we use the word social justice because it it, uh, it is defined as a redistribution of wealth. I don't want anything that I haven't earned. I want a right to a fair employment to fair opportunities, every play, economic opportunities, I, I, but I don't necessarily uh, expect uh, free health care to be part of what is social justice. It is not. Enough said about that. Uh, part B of verse 19, thou shalt not respect persons. And of course, we know what that means. You should not respect the rich or the poor, the black or the white. Uh, and, and those who are, are culturally different from us, he says the individuals should have, their social standing should have no impact on the justice that they're rendered. You know, we don't want to tip the scales because someone is, is black. I would hate to have a standards lord for um, how to pass the uh, commercial uh, pilots test or how to uh, pass the professional engineering exam. I, I happen to be registered as a professional engineer, and of course I'm licensed to uh, to do all kinds of structural designs or construction designs, and I would hate to have someone who did not pass a standard test uh, because of his ethnicity or his race uh, to be, or the standards to be lowered so that that person could meet those standards. I think rather, I think our educational opportunities should be fair and equal and to and available to all public education that is and private as well for that matter so we can read about this uh, no respecter of persons uh, several places uh, uh, going back to Deuteronomy 10 17 Acts 10 34 Romans 2 and 11 uh, now, the, the, the justice was to be in, impartial. Verse uh, 19c reads, Neither take a gift, for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise, and pervert the words of the righteous. Uh, we just finished that from the NIV, and it says, Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twist the words of the innocent. Now the gift of course is a bribe and it's intended to uh, to persuade or to, to uh, sway if you will uh, the judge in one direction or the other uh, and it, it actually uh, works against the innocent because the person that is doing the bribing is no doubt uh, not innocent <laughs> they're certainly not innocent by virtue of the fact that they're bribing and it twists or it perverts judgment, it perverts justice is the bottom line here and and that is spoken of throughout throughout the Bible, Proverbs 17 23 and 1 Samuel and they're called, those who pervert justice are called wicked 
and, and the, they, they pervert the ways of justice or judgment rather Samuel uh, 1 Samuel 8 and 1 and by the way we know that uh, Samuel's sons had a problem with this um, Hophni and Phinehas we know that they appointed uh, uh, Israel's leaders that were uh, bribable they uh, were they would pervert justice uh, and uh, it says the sons were more interested in receiving personal gain from the positions they were in than the process of exacting justice among the people we read about that in first Samuel verse 8 I'm um, chapter 8 and 3 and uh, and of course we know what happened to them and because of their um, uh, perverted justice the people began to cry out they lost faith in God and at that point they had a theocracy uh, and they started crying out for a king as you know verse 20 that which is altogether just shalt thou follow that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee when he says altogether just all together right that is what you are to do that is what you are to follow that is what and as a guide in your rendering judgments okay uh, he says why that you may live or continue to, uh, to possess once you and you uh, are given it that you will continue in that land uh, that I am giving you from the uh, NIV it reads follow justice and justice alone so that you may live and possess the land the Lord your God is giving you so God is giving them clear instruction and and and, and again in this in this lesson he is speaking to the judges not the individuals that will bring cases before them but he's giving direct instruction to the leaders and he's saying <clears throat> As a result, uh, complete and absolute justice with no compromise must be the passion of all God's people. And in this case, the judges. The judges stand in the place of God, and they represent God's judgment concerning whatever the matter. And they are to be informed by the law, okay? Our Western uh, justice system was based in large part on the Bible, okay, we've gotten away from that uh, uh, in, in many areas, but the, our Western system of justice was based on the law given through Moses by God. Now we want to move into the second uh, division from the uh, quarterly. It's entitled Honor Just Decisions, Honor Just Decisions. It's covered between Deuteronomy 17 verses 8 to 13 and then um, from the standard it's it's entitled specific challenges and I want to read I'll just read that passage and then we'll come back and have some verse by verse discussion and I guess for clarity I will read it a greater clarity from the NIV so verse 8 begins if cases come before your courts that are too difficult for you to judge whether bloodshed lawsuits or assaults take them to the place the Lord your God will choose verse 9 go, go to the Levitical priest and to the judge who is in office at that time inquire of them and they will give you the verdict verse 10 you must act according to the decisions they give you at the place the Lord will choose. Be careful to do everything they instruct you to do. Verse 11, act according to whatever they teach you and the decisions they give you. Do not turn aside from what they tell you to the right or to the left. Anyone who shows contempt for the judge or for the priest who stands ministering there to the Lord your God is to be put to death. You must purge the evil from Israel. All people 
will hear and be afraid and will not be contemptuous again. Now, it reads a little differently from the King James Version. So we're going to back up uh, to verse 8. And I don't want to confuse you, but uh, the, uh, I'm going, I like to go verse by verse. And I, we get a little better understanding uh, from the King James Version in some cases uh, than uh, the NIV. So from the King James Version, that verse again says, If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within the gates, thy gates rather, then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Now what is he talking about? These are challenging uh, cases that are being brought before uh, the magistrates or the judges and the officers that are at the gates in the public square, if you will. Uh, and Moses is giving them instructions as to how to handle those. He's, how the judges, okay, that these hard cases are brought before are to handle these, okay? Uh, and uh, when it says cases such as involve an intent to kill, that means blood and blood. Okay, or a legal claim between, uh, that means plea and plea. It might be a, a difficult property claim or, or something of that nature that uh, can't be decided uh, by the local judges or magistrates. Or physical injury, that's what's meant by between stroke and stroke. Somebody's been injured, maybe maimed for life or something like what should be the restitution in that case? Well, it's a hard case. So that's to be taken to where? <laughs> the place that the Lord will choose, okay? Ultimately, we know that was Jerusalem, okay? He, he, he placed his name at Jerusalem. Uh, he allowed Solomon to build a temple there, and that was the place where he summoned all the males over 21 to come three times a year for various feasts and uh, rededications and that's where the sacrifices were made for the people, okay? The atonement was made for all the people. And so that was the place of ultimate judgment. Uh, and it was, of course, the most sacred place in Israel. So not only was it sacred, and as I said earlier, in those days, there was little difference between the sacred and the secular, but it was also where civil matters, the greatest civil matters and criminal matters were to be arbitrated okay so verse 9 reads and thou shalt come unto the priest and Levites and unto the judge that shall be in those days and inquire and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment so um, we know that the uh, the priests were Levites He's talking about the Levitical priests, and they were to provide final rulings in such matters. We could read about that in chapter 19, verse 17 as well, Deuteronomy 19, 17. And it, it doesn't identify the exact judge, but the judge that would be in authority in those days, okay? And that person um, was likely uh, appointed by a priest, the high priest, uh, or a or another priest and uh, was again a I hate to, to say a civil magistrate but because the priests were also involved in the judgment so it wasn't just uh, left to a civil judge if you will the priests were involved and the Levites as we read in this verse so in other words the same people priests who officiated the times of worship uh, teaching the stipulations of the law of Moses and guiding the people in proper actions of life even as relates to health uh, within the community these people were also to render judgments in uh, all kinds of legal matters okay and 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 and, and we see that God had a a, a, a full um, uh, non relationship with uh, with his people uh, and because you might say, well, from a 
from you know from our perspective, what does religion have to do with with uh, uh, with civil cases? Well, again, in those days, uh, God had to, had due to the all encompassing nature of of their relationship, their covenant relationship with God, uh, there was no again distinction between the sacred and the secular. Uh, now there eventually was after the king was established but in those days and God did not intend for there to be a uh, distinction between the secular and the sacred. An example of what God intended to be done after well kings were established and of course God knew that they, the people would ask for a king and there would be evil kings and good kings. King Jehoshaphat who happened to be one of the good ones of Judah reigned from 872 to 848 and he served as a as a good example of the the prescription in our lesson today. He appointed judges and priests in Jerusalem for the administration of justice. We read about that in Second Chronicles nineteen five and eight. And he used the words of Moses in doing so. The king warned uh, the council not to practice respect of person nor taking of gifts. Deuteronomy 197 again he warned them uh, with the very words of Moses so he practiced what uh, God was uh, instructing the children that were to go into possess the land of Israel uh, at this time now <clears throat> what that verse also says is that they were to inquire or bring their case before the uh, the judge that was in those days the priest at the priest the Levites and the judge and uh, they would show them the sentence in other words they would rule uh, on the case they would make a decision concerning the matter after they had made careful inquiry okay they were to look into the matter carefully uh, and they were to uh, make a, a judgment. I, I happen to like uh, forensic files. I, it, it's not un, it, it, it probably not surprising that I also like the old episodes of Perry Mason. And the reason I like the episodes of Perry Mason, uh, first of all, I grew up uh, watching him, is because there's no never any doubt as to the guilt of the, the perpetrator. Uh, at the end of the show. They don't leave it to the jury to decide having some question as to the guilt or innocence of the perpetrator because they generally break down and confess. Perry has built such a solid case through his careful inquiry and investigation with Paul Drake, as you know, that it's it's undeniable that the, the verdict or the, the, the truth rather comes out and is undeniable. So usually the perpetrator confesses on the on the witness stand fast forward to forensic files I don't know how many of you are familiar with that but my wife and I like to watch that and the reason I like that is because they build a solid case based on the forensic science that's irrefutable there's no question about the guilt or innocence of a person uh, once they build this solid case based on evidential uh, facts So I, what, is, what does that have to do with our case here? Well, the judges were, again, not to have their judgment informed, uh, I, I assume, simply by the facts, but I, uh, God's standards, uh, what, what God had already given them in the law, and, of course, we hope that they had spiritual insight and guidance as well. But uh, once they rendered a judgment, as we'll see in a minute, that judgment was to be, uh, followed and it was to be final so verse 10 reads and thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place which the Lord shall choose again Jerusalem ultimately uh, shall choose shall show thee the sentence or the verdict that they will would be shown and thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee. In, uh, in other words, if let's say uh, someone uh, maimed somebody, just injured somebody for life, they could not work the fields uh, ever again. 
Well, maybe the sentence or the judgment of the this high court, let's call it, was that the person that caused the injury, and it wasn't accidental, it was malicious, uh, should support that person for the rest of his life. That, that person and his family, if it happened to be the male. Uh, then the person who received the judgment was to follow that judgment. We'll see in a minute. Exactly according to, uh, it said, all that they informed thee. Okay? Everything that they tell you to do, do it, and the decision is final. That's, that's implied here. Okay? And then verse 11 reads, according to the sentence of the law, or the decision, the verdict that was made, which they shall teach thee or inform you of, and according to the judgment which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee to the right hand or the left. In other words, you are to go strictly in accordance with what the verdict, uh, uh, what the judgment is, what the judgment that comes from this, this, uh, uh, this high court, if you will, is. Uh, and we get back up to Deuteronomy 5.32 and see where Moses also instructs uh, the people in, in, to follow God's law, the laws that he's about to give them, that he's giving them rather in this, in this case, uh, not to turn aside from the right hand or the left hand. See that in Deuteronomy 5.32, verse 5.32. And then also we see something similar to that in uh, Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 uh, to 14 there we read about the broad way and the broad gate that leads to destruction uh, and many there be that find it but straight is the way and narrow is the gate that leads to life eternal and few there be that find it so the Lord Jesus is understanding that we are to follow the straight path just as Moses is uh, commanding or prescribing the people that are receiving the judgment of the high court to do. Verse 12. And the man that will do presumptuously, man or woman, that's generic really, and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord in the place of God. He's representing God in this case, thy, thy God. Or unto the judge, even that man shall die, and thou shalt put away evil from Israel. Now, uh, <laughs> you might think this is pretty harsh here. It said the man that is presumptuous. And what does that mean? I mean, it means that uh, he's acting out of pride or haughtiness of heart. Uh, and if he, he uh, his pride is hurt or whatever, if he does not do what they com they instruct him to do as the verdict, uh, or, or based on the verdict, I should say, then um, he is to be he is to die. He is to be executed. Uh, you might again think that is harsh, very harsh judgment, but such defiance. Uh, brought harm uh, to the community of Israel. I mean, God uses uh, examples throughout the Old Testament and in some cases in the, in, the, in the New Testament as well as to of people so that others won't follow uh, the same path. Uh, you can imagine if uh, someone was given a sentence or a judgment and they didn't follow it, uh, and, and nothing was done as a, uh, a result or, or there was no harsh punishment by the court, uh, then others would be inclined to, uh, to disregard the judgments of the court. We can see that. I mean, you can see that easily. It happens very, uh, very frequently in our culture. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure that uh, back in the days of when the guillotine was used in, in France and hangings were used in, 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 in various places, countries including the U.S., uh, and they were public affairs, uh, those public executions had a tendency <laughs> to dissuade people from doing whatever the person that was executed did. 
And again, we might think this is hard, but God judgment, God's judgment is, is perfect. We might think that Ananias and Sapphira and, uh, and, and Acts uh, didn't commit something that others did probably then and, and, and are still doing to date, and that's lying to the Holy Spirit. Uh, but God made an example of them in the early church. And, and what, what do we read that great fear after, he, after they uh, gave up the ghosts and died at that Peter's uh, conviction? Of them, uh, they great fear fell upon all those that were in the early church, right? And so God wants to put away; He wanted to put away evil from uh, Israel when there was all kinds of sin, and He He uh, commanded execution, and it was to be public. They they were to be stoned, and He declared, "And so shall evil be put away uh, from thee." In verse uh, 13, the final verse in our lesson text, uh, basically uh, just uh, repeats what I just what I just mentioned here. The reason that God uh, has um, stated that that there would be such harsh punishment, uh, regardless, it doesn't say, "Hey, if the person has committed a capital offense, whatever they've done, if they don't follow the." Uh, the judgment of the court if they acted presumptuously or flippantly or out of pride or what, for whatever reason haughtily then they were again going to encourage others to do the same and then if you had no then that would basically destroy uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the authority if you will of the judges and the priests so verse 13 reads, and all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. That was the Lord's wisdom. That was his purpose uh, in uh, to make sure that the people would not do the same. And this fear, it, it, it's not talking about reverence uh, as we know that word translated fear can be in all. It's talking about dread of punishment, fear of punishment. And, and that would uh, be a powerful motivation for avoiding the conduct of uh, resulting uh, that uh, decree of disciplinary action uh, would, would be a strong deterrent for others doing the same. In other words, ignoring the order of the court. Uh, in summary, uh, again, we, we said at the outset that God certainly wants us to be just uh, and to practice justice in our personal lives, one with another. And that word just or justice simply means to be right to be righteous, to do what is right in his sight, in God's sight, okay, according to his righteous standards, which he's given us throughout the Bible. Uh, and then uh, he wants, he, uh, this, uh, our lesson text today is giving specific instructions to those who were to render justice uh, concerning various cases that uh, God's people would bring before them. Uh, God has the same standard today for those who render justice in our courts uh, at, at every level, the local court, uh, the, uh, uh, the, all the way up to the, uh, the, the, uh, the Supreme Court, from, the, from the, the local city court to the Supreme Court, God, the state Supreme Courts and all. God wants those who are in be a positions to make judgments, to judge cases, to be <clears throat> sit in his place and use his righteous standards in doing what is right, in rendering just judgment, okay? We talked about the four types of justice that there are, or, and those are all uh, commanded by the Lord. So I hope that we've learned a little more about what God requires of those who render judgment, and not only those who render judgment, but those also who are instructed after judgments are rendered to do this or to do that, to do it and to do it fully, to not turn to the right hand or to the left hand. So we ask, uh, uh, we thank you all for participating in this lesson, and we pray that God would 
continue to bless uh, each and every one of you and all the households represented by you till such time as we meet again. In Jesus' name, we say amen.